Well, good evening, everyone. And, um, well, actually, it may be morning where you're at. Uh, but it's evening here, and um, I'm getting over a cold real good. Actually, it wasn't a cold. It turned out to be COVID. Can you believe that? It was mild, though, so I was fortunate. I think I got sicker with the vaccines than I did with getting the COVID. <laughs> but maybe that helped keep it mild. So what I have left is a little bit of a cough. So if I start coughing, you know why. All right. Well, today I thought I'd share with you an update on this Takamani. I don't know if you remember this thing. It's the 1980 EF385. Remember the one that I purchased um, uh, when I was in Montana? And... Uh, I had it shipped to the house. It's a beautiful guitar. 1980, got it for 250 bucks. And uh, I did a little work on it. And so I thought I'd share that with you today and share you the sound. And um, I also had my Taylor 12. I thought maybe we could do a quick comparison um, and see how it turned out with brand new strings on it. <clears throat> and some brand new pins as well. So... So we'll get to that, but first, there's a few things I want to go over. Um, the first is I'm going to be doing a live, but not until July the 30th. Okay, so it's a Tuesday, and it will be, you know, here on the West Coast, it'll be at 6 p.m. on a Tuesday night on the 30th. Okay, so I hope you can join us. If you can't, I, you know, I'll have it posted, um, but it's the first for me, and uh, so it should be an experience. It'll either be a complete disaster or... Who knows? But we'll try it anyways. It should be fun. And so um, so that's coming up. And then the other thing is I kind of wanted to update that um, that that beautiful Gibson that, that was shipped to my nephew by mistake, the $7,500 instrument. I'm sure you saw the video. Maybe if you didn't, you can go back and look at it because um, I actually did a review of it before it got sent back to the company. The company did not know that they sent Tim in error an $8,000, or actually it would have come out that with the taxes, a $7,500 instrument um, by mistake. Um, but because uh, it would bother his conscience, and I understand why, um, it, he, they were called and notified that the wrong instrument was sent. But in the meantime, you'd think with him doing that, that they would go out of their way to get the instrument he did purchase back to him. But do you know what they said? They said, no, we can't do that until we get the one that you have back. Once you get that back, we'll send you yours, but not until then. And, you know, we're talking 7,500 instrument, $7,500 versus $300 that he spent on a, a, a open box. Actually, I thought it was a stupid deal. So now you know it was Musician's Friend, right? If you know a stupid deal, you know that's where it went, where it happened. But here's the thing that surprised me about it. Um, you know, they're not going to, they made a mistake and they're telling him that he might not even get the guitar he ordered because if somebody else orders one before they get that guitar back and, um, and they can send it to him, that they have to give it to the next person. Now, does that make sense? Is that good customer service or what? Personally, I think it's service at its worst. Where are we going these days, people? We, Whoever runs these businesses, I'm telling you, I'm I'm totally totally floored. <laughs> I would have been so thankful that person sent me back the guitar. I would have said, get get that the guitar to him right away. I mean, what's three hundred bucks? Anyways, it is on its way. It'll go back to them, and hopefully they don't sell the guitar before he's able to get it because it it was a special deal, and and there isn't another one. So, isn't that strange though? I, I still can't get over that. But I thought I'd tell you about it. What do you think? Do you think that was fair? I, I, I doubt you're going to think it's fair. <laughs> but it's nice to ask the question anyways. All right. So that's what's going on with in the land of, of guitars around here. But so let's get back to this one, the Takamini. So as you remember, um, when I was at the house, uh, the Greg's House of Fine Instruments, uh, they're in, in Montana. Um, 
when I played a whole whole bunch of vintage guitars. I mean, they were absolutely outstanding. But they were also I I had proclaimed that I wasn't going to purchase any guitars. But I did see this in the corner, and it was covered with dust. It hadn't been touched yet. It was something he was going to work on. So when I got home, I you know kind of I just thought it was beautiful. To be honest with you, I I love the look of it. It just kind of reminded me of old times. I know this is a lawsuit error. Uh, it wasn't a lawsuit. It was just during the time that they told them to stop making these headstocks so that they had like, it looks like the Martin logo. <laughs> but, um, you know, this one, I, it was so covered with dust and dirt and their pins were every different which way and size and color. So anyways, um, I asked him, would you mind selling that to me? You know, I'll... I'll get it just as it is. Don't work on it. Don't do anything with it. And he offered it to me for 250 bucks. So I said, great, that's awesome. And so I got this guitar. Um, it came in, in an old case with all these beautiful stickers on it. Um, they're vintage stickers from all over. It looked to me like he um, played guitar in Nevada um, at, at um, Nevada City in one of the old saloons there. And uh, anyways, uh, it, it was, it's really neat. Um, the, the, the case is real neat. Um, it has had a wonderful, wonderful strap that came with it. It was an old, um, like an ace strap, you know, that are woven. They look like hippie, they're the hippie straps with flowers on them. Um, and that alone's worth some money. So I got a really good deal. I, I, I really feel that way. So today I removed all the strings started working on the fingerboard. Um, it, the fingerboard ha has some wear to it, but it still has life, it's still okay. But you can see um, up here in the first four frets that at some point those frets are gonna have to be taken off and replaced. The rest of it looks really clean. Also, the fingerboard has some wear marks um, that are starting, but again, uh, it still plays fine, so I, I wouldn't touch that right now. Um, it, is, it has a lot of character. Um, I had some, uh, like glue here on the face and I was able to get that off with a very, 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 very fine cloth, um, uh, you know, and, uh, went over it and was able to clean it really good. So it really came out that, as far as the cosmetic on that, it came out nice. Did some tightening of the tuners. The tuners all work perfectly. Um, these tuners are, are the Takamani tuners, and uh, they just work really, really well. Um, no problems with them whatsoever. The uh, jack was real loose on this, so I tightened it and put it back into place, and it seems to be working. Changed out the battery, changed out the strings, put some new uh, 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 bridge pins in. Um, they they all fit pretty good. A couple of them did, so I had to kind of bore it out a little bit, but uh, it was f fine. They all went in really nice. They're really good, and t you know, not super tight, but enough that they'll they'll pop in and out and hold those strings in place really well. So I, I'm I'm really thrilled with it. It, it came out really nice, and the and the pickup board it works really well. It sounds nice and clean. I have it plugged in right now into a Bose. All the way up the neck, it just plays really, really well. So that's that's kind of the story of this guitar. But I, I thought it would be kind of fun. without the pickup. And uh, right now it's plugged in. I'll do a quick again. Now that uh, this guitar has these really fresh strings on it,
Now listen to this 12 string. <laughs> okay. edition uh, Taylor 12 string Do you see it's a 12 fret uh, to the body beautiful bevels beautiful uh, maple uh, with a spruce top maple neck it's just a gorgeous instrument it's very very pretty very comfortable Listen to in terms of its output, but you have to remember this is a smaller body, this is like a concert size. It's just not as loud. Um, It's definitely a keeper from the 1980s and and truss rod it worked really really well i i just uh, i did just a slight change to bring the action down um, and it was very responsive to uh, um, <clears throat> the very tool that you would use on a martin guitar so these things are pretty much i from what i understand they're they're kind of a a makeup of the Martin guitar. They're, they're kind of structured the same way. So they did use the same size. And the truss rod is right there. So yeah, so uh, it's, it's just a very, very nice, nice instrument, well built, nice, nice picking, and uh, well worth 250 bucks, I'll say. All right. So there you have it, the 1980 EF385. Uh, Takamani. And it has a solid spruce top. Uh, and I think the jury's still out as to whether or not that's a solid back and side. Although on the website it says that this model does have a solid back and side. Um, but that may have been for later models. So I'm not really sure. When you look inside it really does look like a solid guitar. But it's hard to tell with this finish and everything. Um, if it, if it is or not. So anyway, so that's, that's the story. And, uh, I just thought I'd share that with you and I hope you all have a wonderful day, um, or night, wherever you are in this world. 